Okay, so now I'll take my completed home automation switch plate and install it in one of my rooms. This is the master bedroom and we have a three switch panel of which only two are being used. So the home automation switch plate will fit here perfectly. And while I'm here, I'll take this opportunity to replace the toggle switches with these nicer flat ones. But first things first, I know I still have power in this box, so I'm going to go ahead and flip the breaker first. And now that I flip the breaker, there's no more power in the box. So I can confidently start working on this. So first I'm going to remove the spare switch and replace the other two with, with the flat switches. Okay, so I've replaced the two switches that I actually use in this panel um, and I've kept them a little bit loose because I know I'm going to need some adjustments when putting the home automation switch plate in. And while I was in there, I also found the neutral wire bundle and I found a hot wire. So now I can start wiring these up. And I do have two black wires coming out of the hasp, but I marked the hot wire with black tape just so I would know right now which one to use. Make sure they sit in there tight and I can start putting this back in. And I'll tighten it with a couple screws just to keep it in place. Okay, and before I put the rest of the screws in, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the power and make sure everything works and then we'll finish it up. You can see as soon as I turn the breaker back on, the hasp came up with the configuration screen. So this is pretty cool. I just need to bring my phone camera to the hasp, click on the link that the QR code sends me to, and now I've joined the hasp network. As soon as I do that, when I open up my Chrome browser, it takes me to the Wi-Fi manager webpage. And from this web page, the first thing I need to do is configure Wi-Fi. I'm going to select my Wi-Fi network and type in my password. We will also need to type in the Mosquito Broker IP address and hit Save. After the HASP reboots, we should see the following screen. The HASP is now showing us that it's connected to the Wi-Fi and to the MQTT broker. So now, if I'm in my HASP, sitemap, I should be able to select screens, and I am. Nothing's configured on the HASP yet, so that's why you're just seeing blank screens. But I am able to select screens and use the touchscreen. So all that's left for me to do is actually configure the HASP with my items, with my rules, with my home specific configuration. I'll use this screen for scene selection I'll probably use the second screen for some climate controls, like the like setting the temperature or the HVAC mode. And I'll probably use the third screen for media control or anything else that comes to mind. Okay, so now that I have the HASP installed and running in my master bedroom, I'll give you an example of how to configure it to actually use it in the open HAP system. So from this point on, this is going to be specific to my configuration, and I don't want to make you feel like you have to use this particular method, but hopefully this gives you an idea of how to configure the HASP for your own preference. And if you want to get some other ideas, go to the main project GitHub page. I'll post the link below in the video description. And take a look at the HASP demo screens that Adarusha posted up here. So you can see that he has a scene screen, a status screen showing time and temperature, a music control screen, the status of a 3D printer, 
an alarm keypad, or a set of light dimmers. Your best bet to adapt the HASP to your own configuration will be to look at those demo screens and go through the blank screens of the HASP and figure out which one fits your layout the best. So while I'm on the topic of configuring the HASP for use with OpenHAB, I'll also point you to this OpenHAB forum post that I created which deals specifically with that. And I'll also link to the post in the video description below. What I wrote up in the post is exactly what the HASP is, how it works, and how to configure it for your own use case. But the general idea to use HASP with OpenHAB is to go to the main GitHub project page first, go into the user contribute folder, contrib, and here we will find the OpenHAB specific configuration, which I provided as a pull request for Adarusha to add to his project. And in that pull request, I provided ready-made items and rules files for your HASP plate, as well as a sample sitemap file. All you have to do is copy these items and rules files into your OpenHAB configuration, and you can copy the HASP sitemap configuration into your main sitemap file in order to get a screen like this. Now you don't need this screen to be able to use the HASP, but it is a nice overview of the particular plate status and the ability to control its screen or backlight brightness level. So after you've copied the items and rules files to your configuration, let's take a quick look at the actual items file. These are very generic and you don't really need to worry about the items file. I simply created an item for every button, dimmer, and other configuration item that's available in the HASP. So unless you want to change anything in the HASP, you can leave this file alone. One thing I will mention is if you are installing multiple HASPs, you will want to make another copy of these items and rules for each new plate. And all you really should have to do is change this plate01 text to the name of your new plate. And you will have to make sure that the mosquito topics match up with your new plates topic. Now, the hasp that rules file is where all the user specific configuration goes. And I tried to make things as easy as possible, so I created specific sections which are labeled with the ability to change the user configuration. So, for example, in this first section, you can change the variables related to each screen's push buttons, like the push button text or the font size. In particular, this first section right here is what determines what screens are shown on the HASP when you hit one of the three buttons on the bottom of the HASP. So the page button one page and text correspond to the first of the three buttons. The second set corresponds to, to the middle button and the third set corresponds to the third button on the bottom of the screen. So these numbers and this text are specific to your configuration. I've selected screen number one, which is a set of four horizontal push buttons and I've labeled it as the scene screen. So I will use the four buttons on that screen to select the four different lighting scenes in my home automation system. For button two I've selected to use screen number two which is also a set of four horizontal buttons but I will use this screen as a status screen. So I will show things like time, temperature and some other system status. And I think I'm going to use the third screen as the heating and cooling system configuration. So I've selected screen number six for that because of its layout. The next step in configuring the HASP is to go to the section corresponding to each screen and configure the button text there. So again, for my scene screen, which is number one, I'm going to configure the four buttons as scene selection buttons. So I'll name them morning, work scene, evening scene, night scene. These are just the different scenes that I have configured with my OpenHAB dynamic scene rules, which is another video you can watch on my channel. So let's keep going with this example. Now that I've configured the buttons that I will use to select between my different scenes, I'm done with this section. And you'll notice again that I've delineated the user configuration sections from the rules that are used to handle the logic of selecting a different screen, for example. So we'll skip over this logic. And the third section is the user defined handler rules section. So here is where you will add your OpenHAB specific handler rules for the HASP. 
The first set of rules deal with hasp to open hab item handling rules. So think of this as when you press the button on the hasp touch screen, a corresponding rule will fire. And in the logic of that rule, you will want to define an action to take when that button is pressed. So the first rule you see right here is handling page one. So this is exactly where we want to define the scene handler rules. So the way the rule works is that when a member of the hasp plate page one button group receives an update of on, which means that I've pressed one of the four buttons on screen one of the hasp, this rule will fire. Inside the rule, there is an if statement for every possible push button that's on that screen. And inside these if statements is where you want to place the actions you want to perform when that button is pressed. The page one button four, which is the top button of the hasp screen, I've labeled as the morning scene push button. So I've already placed an example in here within the logic, which we can just use directly. So I'll uncomment that line. And now when I hit save here on this rule, when I press the button labeled morning on screen one of the hasp, the morning lighting scene will receive an on command and all the lights tied to that scene will change state. This is the latching state. So when you press that push button, an on command is sent to the scene and that's it. You can't turn off the scene. You have to select another push button to turn on that scene. This works fine with my scene logic because the scene logic will receive that on command, perform the actions of the scene and turn the switch back off. But if you want something like a toggling action, for example, if you're using the hasp to turn on the lights or turn on or off the lights in the room you're in, I've also placed an example here for toggle logic. So with the toggle logic, if the button labeled work scene has been pressed on the hasp, I will first check the state of that work scene item. If it's on, I will turn it off. And if it's off, I will turn it back on. So this logic will handle that toggling action. But in this case, since I'm working with scenes, I simply want to send the on command when that push button is pressed. The third button on screen one is the evening scene. So I will send the on command to the evening scene item. And the last one is the night scene. So that's it. Now I've used this rule for page one to handle all four push buttons on that page. And these are pretty simple. As, as soon as the push button is pressed on the screen, I'm just sending a command to one of the items in my OpenHAP system. The rest of the rules in this section handle the other pages on HASP. So page two is also a four button page, but I'm not gonna put any logic inside here because on page two, I will only be displaying status and not using any of the inputs on that page. Page three also has four buttons. In page four, you start seeing things like dimmers. So I also have if statements to handle the dimmer value change. And in the page five rule, I've actually placed an example of how to handle a dimmer. So for example, on page five, if that dimmer changes, I actually use that dimmer value to send a command to the has backlight item value. So looking at this, you can kind of see how to use the dimmer state, send it to the light dimmer, item and that will actually work to change the backlight of the hasp plate itself. Of course you can change this to be a light dimmer in your OpenHAB home animation system. After the last page handling rule, the next section of rules deals with OpenHAB items changing the state of the hasp plate items. So a couple of examples I wrote here is changing the dimmer position on the hasp screen when I move the backlight dimmer on page five. So what you see here is that when the hasp light brightness item receives an update. I send a command with that brightness item state to the hasp plate dimmer on page five. And when you see this in action, it will make more sense. So when I move the first dimmer on page five, I'm changing the value of the dimmer in the hasp and that value change is being handled by the rules here. So that value of the P5 B7 dimmer is being sent to the, the hasp plate 01 light dimmer item. And because this item is changing state in OpenHAB, the rule here fires, and I'm using that new brightness state value to change the position of the P5 B8 dimmer 
on the hasp. So hopefully from this example you see how the first set of rules handles changes on the hasp and how they affect items in the open hab system. And this set of rules uses changes in the open hab item values to make visual changes on the hasp screens. And this section is where I will write my rules to change the temperature value or update the clock on page two. And the last rule I wrote here provides an example of how to deal with the chart on page nine of the hasp. I'm using the chart to display the Wi-Fi signal strength of the HASP itself, but you can just as well use this to display room temperature or something else. Just keep in mind that with the HASP, the chart you display on page 9 only shows and only updates when the HASP is actually on page 9. If you select a different page, the chart values are reset and will start over the next time you enter page 9 again. So hopefully that gave you an idea of how to configure the HASP for your own use with OpenHAB. And if you do use the HASP, share your ideas with us either via Twitter, Instagram, the Discord server, which I'll post a link to in the video description, or the OpenHAB forums on the HASP post that I created. And as always, if you like these videos, please go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of future videos coming out. Thank you again for watching, and until next time, this is BK Hobby. Thank you.